Hello everybody, welcome back to Mover Ruins Movies. Today we're going to take a look at The Tomorrow War starring Chris Pratt and Yvonne Strahovski. A uh, movie about time travelers arrive from 2051 to deliver an urgent message. 30 years in the future, mankind is losing a war against a deadly alien species. The only hope for survival is for soldiers and civilians to be transported to the future and join the fight. Determined to save the world for his daughter, Dan Forrester teams up with a brilliant scientist and his estranged father to rewrite the planet's fate. We're only going to take a look at the F-22 scene, so yes, it is still Mover Ruins movies. Um, we're just going to stick with the name. If it's a nice movie, it won't be ruined. If it's not, whatever. It's all tug-in-cheek anyway. Uh, real quick before we get started, though, No Justice, uh, N.O. Justice, uh, the third book in the Alex Shepard series is now available for pre-order. It'll be available on July 27th as well as the paperback, and the audiobook will be a couple months later that is in development. So hope you guys enjoy this. We're going to take a look at the F-22 close air support scene in The Tomorrow War. Well, could have done without seeing that. Well, if you think this is bad, you don't want to see what happens next. Okay, here we go. And as we start the movie, uh, they have just been dropped off uh, 30 years in the future, 2052, uh, on this rooftop in Miami, which is where the alien species and stuff are. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, come on, this is actual. We're here. Some of us. Chris Pratt is a former himself. special ops I'm, guy. I'm Dan Forrester. I got one problem, Dan, and I'm gonna need your help. Give me that map of the lab now. My research team is stranded in a lab by your location. And since you have experience running CSAR, I need you to get my team out of there. Stop me that command. Listen, everybody, we're on a CSAR, all right? It's combat, search, and rescue. Our destination is this research facility. I need every able bodied person on this rooftop to follow. Okay, so. I mean, this is splitting hairs, but technically it's not CSAR. Uh, Combat Search and Rescue is for isolated personnel or air crew uh, done by the Air Force or the Navy. What they're actually talking about is either a QRF or an extraction, uh, which an Army guy would have experience with, not with CSAR. Um, that's just not what they're doing. And when they already have the isolated personnel, uh, it's a personnel recovery mission that they're going to try to get them out of bad guy land. Uh, CSAR would involve assets from Air Force, Jolly, Sandy, all those um, groups. Splitting hairs a little bit. Okay, they're gonna start the bombing and they've got the Raptor. That's Cabo Gunderson, the uh, F-22 demo pilot. They actually used real jets in the sense that they got footage from Cabo's actual demo routine, uh, which is cool, I guess, you know. It's a good thing they're letting them have GoPros in the cockpit. There's the Raptor, quite possibly the worst platform for this mission. He doesn't have his landing light on, sir. I think they just sped up the taxi footage. Now he does, so. Uh, cool footage, though. I mean, they got good demo footage for it. That's great if you're on a budget, too. Here come the Raptors. Those are CGI. All right, so they're designating red smoke. That makes sense. Um, they even called it a kill box alpha. Okay, also makes sense. Raptor's a terrible platform for this. I mean, it's just, they can carry the small diameter bomb or the GBU-32, which is a thousand pound GPS guided bomb. They're not, I mean, maybe in the future they've adapted, but realistically, by this point in 2052, all the Raptors are in the boneyard and they're flying still A-10s and B-52s. But you need to stay away from areas with red smoke. Stay away from the red smoke. Oh, who does a gender reveal? It's a girl. Okay, we got straight footage from the demo. That is the Langley uh, demo jet. And next to it is the Hill F-35 Fat Amy. Sorry, Obese Amelia demo jet. So actually, Fat Amy makes more sense in this scene, but this is the only time you actually see an F-35. For whatever reason, it's flying fingertip, and then you never see it again. So there it is. The continuity. Now the Fat Amy turned into a uh, five ship of Raptors in blower. Why are they in blower? They're like super cruising at low level. What I think, though, this might have been from the um, demo over the water, like the actual air show, and then they just CGI'd all the stuff in the back, because this is a GoPro 
uh, footage because you can kind of see in his visor uh, that this might have been from the what Fort Lauderdale or, or the uh, uh, Miami Air Show. So that's pretty cool. But that is Cabo. You see his name tag there. Um, so everything in the cockpit is going to be right because it's a GoPro. I mean, it's a real demo team footage that they use. Pretty cool that they did that. Uh, but as again, Hollywood likes everybody to be low and everybody to be an afterburner for no reason. Yeah, you wouldn't, you just wouldn't have any reason to be low altitude for, especially what they're dropping GPS guided bombs. No, you need to be up high. Um, you, there's just no reason to get low. Does Hollywood not know that helicopters exist? See, that's what I don't understand is where were the helicopters? Where were the a-10s and the B-52s and, you know, strike eagles. The EX would be appropriate. You know, it'd only be about 30 years old at this point. Block 70s. Anything. The, the Raptors are all timed out by now. I mean, you got to think. If the Raptor is still flying in, in the 50s, you know, in the, the early 50s, it's a 40 to 50 year old airplane by then. It's not flying anymore. It's been boneyarded for a while. Yeah. Standard Hollywood stuff, man. Blower, supersonic, in between buildings. And just think about it. I mean, those the little alien dudes are on the ground uh, or on top of the buildings. Why would you need to get that low? You just don't. You're not strafing. You're just dropping bombs. And this is just a waste. People watch too many World War II movies, I think. That's a demo team shot from probably one of their, uh, their shows. This might have all been filmed at the Miami... Uh, or Fort Lauderdale Air Show. Bravo on me, danger close. Bravo on me, danger close. I mean, yeah, danger close is a real thing. On me, that's all useless. Why? Cool shot, pointless. Like, you, you would never be lead trail at 50 to 75 feet for any reason. Just no reason. There we go again, all through low altitude, dropping napalm. Yeah, that's from the demo. That's pretty cool. Uh, what now? What's he dropping? Those are hellfires. Those are hellfires dropping from an F-22. Ballistically. Not even rocket... They're not even being dropped. They're just hellfires being dropped from an F-22. Uh, weapons free, weapons away, I guess, would probably be right. Weapons free is just you can shoot. Uh, we don't really use that. Cleared hot would have been good, but they didn't have an advisor on this one. There's a shit ton. Shit ton is probably something a pilot pilot would say. Probably not on the radio, but they would at least say it in their cockpit. T minus 30 seconds, you're not launching the space shuttle, sir. Dan, what is your status? Does anybody else want to say what's wrong with this? How about that the stick is on the wrong side? So we talked about, or I got a lot of comments about this in the Tears of the Sun where they said, well, you know, they have to, you know, it doesn't make sense if you put it on the right because it's going from left to right, so it's got to be continuity. Well, they chose which direction this dude would come from, and they still put the stick on the wrong side. That is his left hand. That is the left trigger. He is about to hit the pickle button, correct? But the stick is not, that's where the throttle is. Stick's over here. Throttle, stick. That might even be a Viper stick. I, I don't know what the F-22 stick looks like. Probably looks pretty similar to a Viper stick, being it's Lockheed Martin, but that might actually be a Viper stick. Uh, so in the fight, this actually is probably the most realistic looking F-22 because probably by 2050, all the um, coating is gone. And that's all that's left. So I believe that. Again, we're dropping hellfires ballistically at low altitude for no reason. Maybe that's all they had left. Maybe in 30 years, all they had left. Or maybe this is a new bomb that they just came up with. No reason to be dropping an afterburner. Um, I don't know. You would think if it's been overrun and this is all we have left, 
I mean, maybe. But unlikely. Again, weapons free. Weapons away. Bombs away. Anything. Weapons free is not. They're not free. And that's it. Miami's on fire. We all die. Case closed. Quick review on this movie. I actually enjoyed it. So, um, spoilers from this point on. I tried not to show any of the alien stuff uh, at the beginning or in, in some of the stuff because, you know, it is a thing. But, all right, spoiler alert. Uh, spoiler, 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 spoiler. I thought it, it was an entertaining movie. I enjoyed it. I thought Chris Pratt did a great job. I thought that, you know, it, it kept my attention. The, some of the time travel stuff is pretty cool. There's a lot of time travel paradoxes that they don't really get into, uh, but some that they do, like, the you know, the, the fact that people that, are coming back to the past, weren't born yet, so they can't meet their uh, their former self, and people that were going to the future already had to be dead. I thought that was pretty cool the way they did that. I don't know how it really works though, is once Chris Pratt gets the, the stuff and stops the actual attack from happening in the future, how that works, because that is a paradox, you know, because now it's a different timeline and stuff. They, they've explored that in various other um, films and shows and stuff. So, I mean, it's not that big a deal, but I thought it was entertaining. Stolen from a lot of different stuff, aliens, starship troopers. There's a lot of stuff that's from other movies that you're like, oh yeah, I, re I remember that. But for a sci-fi flick that's just entertaining and, you know, two hours, yeah, okay, pretty cool. I don't understand personally how our military got to this point in the sense that you know, there's no new fighters, there's no drones. At the end, they do show some drones taking out the uh, the aliens there, but it seems like there would be more of that. In fact, Elon Musk told us that drones would be the future. We wouldn't have F-22s doing this. So what happened to the drones? It seems like they'd be highly effective in 30 years. Um, and you know, where are the AC-130s? Where are the A-10s? You know, if I'm making this movie, I'm putting an A-10 in there because the A-10 will probably outlast the F-22. They're getting new wings, they're getting new mods, new avionics and stuff, and the B-52 will probably still be around. So you've got a lot of other options. Uh, I know the F-22 is sexy and all that stuff. Even the F-35 would have made more sense in this case because at least it has some, some close air support capability, maybe not like an A-10. Uh, Strike Eagle would have been a good choice, but it's nitpicking. I mean, really, it's just one scene. The rest of the movie is enjoyable. Uh, there's a part where, actually in this scene, where they're they're trying to rescue the scientists and they're making noises, they're shining flashlights. A guy who should know, I mean, he's a special ops guy, he should know how to slice the pie or slice the corner. He should know how to use light discipline and stuff like that. He's just straight up yelling at each other and stuff. So I don't know that they really had a technical advisor uh, on a lot of this movie, but I think it is cool that they used actual demo footage uh, from the F-22 and that they had a little bit of cooperation from the Air Force. Maybe it's a start. Maybe you get a little bit here and then eventually we actually get full cooperation so we actually get a good movie. But uh, maybe we'll have to just wait for Top Gun Maverick. So anyway, don't forget about NO Justice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The link will be in the description, by the way, for NO Justice. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.